In the previous episode I have created the alpha channel that now I will use to composite this video over the background. You can use whatever photo or video you like or create something of your own. The techniques that I am going to show you in this episode apply no matter what background you use. I will remind you quickly how the alpha channel is created. So I passed the image through the chroma key and this one controls the transparency of this fabric and the hair. And here we have the garbage mat. It's the chain of distance key and several color keys and this is the resulting mat. This one is multiplied by this one and this is our resulting alpha channel. I wanted to have better control over the transparency of this fabric and the hair so I have passed my chroma key through the RGB curves and I have limited its influence by something like this. This is just my garbage mat that has been passed through delayed a road node with a distance of minus 15 and then it's blurred. This result is used as the factor for this RGB curves node. This way this curve controls only the transparency of the fabric. Then I pass this result through another RGB curves node and this node's influence is limited to this area. And this is nothing more than inverted result of those nodes. Here we have the multiplication of this one by this one and this is our mat. The image itself is passed through the mix node that is muted, another mix node that is muted. Those nodes do absolutely nothing, they simply reroute those noodles. The image comes to the set alpha node and as the alpha channel I use my resulting mat. We have the problem with the green color that is left here in those areas, so I pass this result through color spill node where I dispeel the green channel using the average algorithm with a ratio of something like that. But I could even use the one ratio and it will also give me very nice result. In previous episode I promised that I will explain how color spill node works. So here it goes. When we use those settings, the spill green channel with the algorithm of average, this node modifies the green channel so that it never exceeds the average value of the red and blue. We can mimic this behavior by using a simple math. This is our result that has not been dispeeled. Let me separate this to the RGBA channels. And I want to make sure that green channel never exceeds the average of red and blue. So let's calculate the average. To do so, I will simply add the red channel to the blue channel. Red, blue and divide the result by 2, which is exactly the same as multiplying by 0 0.5. So I take this, multiply it by 0 0.5. That's the average of red and blue channel. Now I have to make sure that the green channel never exceeds this value. So I will use another math node, set the operation to minimum, and take the minimum of this one and the green channel. This is the result. And I will use this as the resulting green channel of my image. That's the original green channel and that's the same limited by the average of red and blue. And the only thing left to do is to combine the channels back together. Converter combine RGBA, take the red channel from the original, Use this one as the green channel, blue channel from the original, as well as the alpha channel. And that's our resulting image. As you can see, it's exactly the same as this one. So this setup is our manual dispeeling of green channel. Here in this node, I have also the control over the ratio. I can set the ratio to 0.5 this will mean that the green channel will never exceed half of the average of red and blue channel. It's very easy to mimic this here in our example. The only thing I have to do is to take the average of the red and blue and multiply it by 0 0.5. And this is my result which as you can see is exactly the same as the result of this node. 
So this is how this node works when we use the average algorithm and dispute the green channel. We can as well use other algorithm that is called simple and we also can control the ratio. It's behaving a little bit differently. In some cases this will work better. Check this over your result and you'll see what works best for you. When we use the simple algorithm we can use one of the channels as the limiting channel. In our case average works better. And here we have the checkbox unspill. When RGB are set to zero this node has no influence. If we set green to one we get exactly the same result as if this checkbox was unchecked. But when we turn it on we have some more controls to fine-tune our results. We can increase the red value, blue value or both and we get different results. In our case the default settings, default ratio of one average algorithm gave the result that I was looking for. So we are ready to place our video over the background. First let's make some order here. Let's get rid of all those nodes. This is our manual dispute. We don't need it anymore. And now the way that I like to have my nodes organized is such that I have the chain of main nodes that go from top to bottom. And I will use this area for that. I use a lot of muted mix notes to reroute my noodles. They seem useless, but they help me to find things. This way it's easier for me to immediately see what is the result of what. Okay, so my background is the first thing in the stack. This note is just an input image note. When I hit open, I can browse for the image and load it. In case of this note, my video, it's also an input image note, but as the source, instead of using the default single image, I use image sequence. Here I specify how many frames my sequence contain, which frame is the starting frame. I can also make it cyclic and auto refresh. When I make it cyclic and my animation is longer than this value, when it comes to frame 350, it will display the first frame of the sequence. When I use multiple input images, I like to have them placed in one area. So it's easier for me to replace the sources if I want to. I don't have to search through all of the nodes that I have. And this is by now very simple setup. But when it develops, it may become not very obvious where my inputs are. So when I have them grouped together, it's easier for me to navigate. So let's say that this will be the area of inputs. I decided that here will be my main chain of nodes and mixing my video with the background should happen somewhere here. So let's add a color mix, place it here, take the background, F, then my video, F, take a look at it and turn on the option to use the alpha of the second input. The sizes of the images don't match and here we have some mass. Let's adjust this mass first because it's easier. I will take the muted mix node, duplicate it, plug it here and move it somewhere here. And now let's take care about the sizes. The size of this image is right now exactly the same as the original size of our background. And we see that it's bigger than our render size. We can use the distort scale node, plug it here and set it to render size. And now it fits the render size. But there is one issue here. This node destroyed the original proportions of this image. That's the original and that's the scaled one. In case of such image, it doesn't matter much. Who knows what are the proportions of those mountains? In our case, I will leave it this way. But let's say that you want to preserve the original proportions. So here's the trick that can do it. We have our image passed through the scale node with the render size option turned on. We can add the mix node and use this as the first input and the original as the second one. And this is how the result looks like. The size of the resulting image equals the size of this one. So it's exactly the same as the render size. Then the original image in its original size 
is mixed into this one. We use the mix blending mode factor of 1 so it fully covers the image but only the area specified by this node. The size of it remained untouched so this result is as if we have cropped the image to the render size. Cropped, not squeezed. This squeezes the image and this crops the image. Now here we can control the size. So let's add another distort scale node, plug it here. This time we will use relative and when we use exactly the same value for x and y we can size it up or down preserving the proportions. So the easiest way to do it would be to add the input value set the value to something that we want. Let's at the moment leave it at 0.5 and I will plug this value to both of those inputs. I select both of those nodes and hit F twice and this gave me 50% of the size of the image. This value is of course too low so let's set it to something, I don't know, 0.7, a little bit more, 0.8. This should be okay. And now we can reframe this, so let's add distort translate, plug it here and let's move it down along y-axis. So let's set the y value to 50 let's say. No, the other way, minus 50, minus 60, let's leave it at minus 50. Let's leave it as is and later I will decide if I will use this one or this one, the squeezed one. I will probably use the squeezed one, so that's the one that I connect here, pass here and mix with my image. Let's take a look at the result and it's done. The alpha channel of the video is close to perfect. Green channel has been dispelled. But anyway, somehow it feels that those are two images composited together. We have to adjust the colors of the video, the colors of the background, then make some final adjustments to the composite. The background should be blurred out a little bit to fake the depth of field. And there is also another thing that we can do. It's called light wrap. The light from the background should a little bit wrap around the edges of the foreground. This can be rather easily faked. We can take the blurred version of the background and add it to the edges of the foreground. So let's create the setup for all those adjustments. Here's our background. Here's our foreground and here they are mixed together. This is the alpha channel of the foreground. This sets the alpha channel of the foreground to this. And this node dispels the green channel. We have to color correct the background. So let's add a color balance and plug it here. I will plug two more muted mix nodes here and here to specify the area where we are doing our adjustments to the background. Here are the colors of our foreground and we also want to adjust them so let's duplicate the color balance and plug it here. Now let's reorganize this area a little bit. This is the scale node that controls the size of our video. Let me do something like this. Replace this connection as well as this one. Now let's create some room for adding the light wrap. I will select all of those nodes, the alpha channel and all of those and move them down. And this is the place where I will add the light wrap. Let's do some more cleanup here. And take care about this area. This is the node that dispels the green channel, but I would like dispeeling to happen before the color correction. So I would like this node to be placed here. Here I am dispeeling after I set the alpha channel, but it doesn't really matter. This node doesn't care about the alpha channel. So I can detach it by hitting Alt D and simply move it here. And as you can see, the result didn't change. This node mixes the foreground with the background. Here I set the alpha channel of the foreground. But I don't have to do it this way. Instead of using set alpha node, I can simply take the alpha and plug it here as the factor of this mix node. This way I don't need this node anymore. Control X. 
Let's also reroute this. So I will take this mix node, duplicate it, plug it here and move it somewhere here. And now let's take care about the light wrap. I need to add the blurred version of the background, so I will use this one and add it to the edges of the foreground. So first thing that I will do will be to separate the edges and create a little bit of the fall off. I will use my garbage mat for that. The first thing I need to do is to invert this. Then I will blur it, so this will create the fall off. I will use fast Gaussian and at the beginning let's set the X and Y values to 10. Those amounts will control how deep the light wrap will go into the foreground. Let's also organize this space a little bit better. To get the proper mat for the light wrap I would also want to multiply this one by the original math. So I will add the math node, set it to multiply, plug it here and multiply it by this. And here I have my edge with the fall off. In our case I don't have to use this node because the final alpha channel of the foreground is taken care of here when I am mixing the foreground with the background. But in some situations we have to do it this way, but here we can simply delete it. And this will be used as the factor for the mix node with the add blending mode, where I will add the blurred version of the background to the foreground. Plug it here, set the blending mode to add, plug this one as the factor, and we have the white color that wraps around the edges of the foreground. But we want to replace this by the blurred version of the background. I would like to use this one. Let's reroute this so that it goes here. I will duplicate this node, connect the two. Let's move it here, connect it to this mix node. Let's clean this space a little bit. but now it adds the original background and we need the blurred version of it. Let's use a fast Gaussian and use a blur amount of 10 for X and Y. And we can control the depth of it by controlling the blur amount of the mat. Let's make it higher so it goes deeper into the foreground. But I think that the amount of something like 7 will work best in our case. So this controls the depth of this light wrap, but I would also want to control the power of it. So I can simply pass this through the math multiply node. Let's plug it here, change the operation to multiply. When I set the second input to 1, it's the full power. If I want to, I can make it higher, but this doesn't work well. In our case, I should lower it to something like 0 0.5, maybe 0 0.6, and it should do the trick. Now I can adjust the colors of the background. I feel that the highlights should go a little bit to this direction. I will tone it down a little bit by the lift. When I'm looking at the video, I feel that I should get rid of some of the yellow color from the midtones, so I will adjust the gamma a little bit. I should also blur the background a little bit, so filter blur. This time I will use the Gaussian type, set the amount initially to 10 maybe, and I will check the gamma as well as the bookie. This will create a nice behavior in the highlights when they exceed certain value. 10 is a little bit too much, let's lower it to something like 6 maybe, or 7. Then I will play a little bit with the saturation, 
make some final grade, but I will do all this after adding some additional effects like glow or a little bit of the grain, but all this will be taken care of in the next episode.